Welcome to the Texas Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Plan virtual meeting. In cooperation with the governor's office, planning partners, fellow state agencies, and the Federal Highway Administration, TxDOT is drafting an electric vehicle infrastructure plan to manage $407 million allocated to Texas as part of the bipartisan infrastructure law passed in November of 2021. 80% of the cost of developing the EV stations will be paid for with federal funds, and the remaining 20% will be paid for by the private sector. No state funds will be used. The federal law requires states to submit an EV plan to the Federal Highway Administration by August 1st, 2022. On a competitive basis, TxDOT will contract with private entities for the acquisition, installation, operation, and maintenance of publicly accessible EV charging infrastructure. TxDOT will not own or operate the charging equipment. We prepared the following resources to help visualize the plan and provide a mechanism for feedback from the public. The first resource is the EV landing page. Here you will find links to everything discussed today. You can also subscribe for updates by clicking the top right button on the page. The first section is the Texas Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Plan link and email address to submit comments. Next, you'll find governor's guidance, federal legislation, a high level deployment plan, contracting with private entities, collaboration and engagement, a general timeline provided by the NEVI formula program guidance, frequently asked questions, and a list of resources. The next resource is the statewide planning map. On this map, you'll find overlays for the alternative fuel corridors, you can turn on the corridors by clicking Alt Fuels Electric in this case to see the planned and existing charging stations across the state. We'll also change the background map to a light gray canvas and we'll turn on the legend so we can see what everything means. Okay, so this is a pan and zoom map. Uh, as you zoom in, you'll see more information. You can see that there are EV study areas of two types or the county seats, which you see here and along the electric alt fuel corridors, which we see here in dark or blue. We have existing charging stations across the state, level one, level two, DC fast charge, and DC fast charge stations that meet every requirements. We also have planned DC fast charge stations being administered by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality through a different plan and different program. We've also added those here. There's more information to be found on these by clicking on the dots, uh, you'll get a name, number of stations, uh, number of connectors per station, connector type, uh, power rating, estimated cost, um, funding, MPO, study area, things like that. At the top, we also put the contact email address for the NEVI program. If you want to submit comments about this particular station, you can do that. This is publicly available. Everyone can view it now. Um, as information changes, as the plan is updated, that information will be posted to this map. The next resource is our EV dashboard. Uh, this is updated weekly from information from the Alternative Fuels Data Center. It tells you how many charging stations are currently located in Texas, in this case, 2,359. The number of locations by owner, the locations by charge rate, meaning how fast the vehicle charges at this charger. Level one is a slow charge rate. Level two is a medium charge rate and DC fast charge is a rapid charge rate. Next section is the connector by count type. So how many connectors do we have by each charging type? Um, so there are 4,131 medium charge rate connectors. The next three are all rapid charge rate by different connector types, Chatamo, CCS, and Tesla. This program will be installing CCS connectors, which is an industry standard. Next resource is our Texas Electric Vehicle Registration Tool. Uh, this tool is provided and maintained by the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Uh, this tells us how many EVs are currently registered in the state, and it's updated on a one to two week basis. You can hover over individual counties to see the number of registered vehicles in that county. We also have registration by model type, so model EV model. 
We also have registration by year. So you can see the increase throughout the years uh, of EVs across the state. You can also page through to see by uh, EVs by zip code, city, county, and a composite view for all. This is our EV registration tool. The next resource is a tips page for electric vehicle drivers in Texas. This page will tell you how to charge an electric vehicle, the different types of charging, level one charging, level two charging with examples, and DC fast charging with examples. It also gives you ideas on when to charge your electric vehicle, when, when's the best time to set the timer. Uh, the best time is between 6, 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Um, how full to charge your electric vehicle for battery longevity purposes, normal, daily driving condition, long trip conditions, um, where to charge your vehicle. Like we said, there are more than 2,000 charging stations in Texas and growing. There are helpful tools out there to, to help you find routes as you're traveling across the state. A note on maintenance. Um, electric vehicles require less maintenance, and we can talk about that a little bit. Vehicle efficiency um, and financials. So there's a Texas EV rebate program. There's a U.S. federal tax credit. Uh, those are all listed here. That's our EV tips page. The next resource is our social pinpoint site for the EV program. On this page, you'll find links to the draft Texas EV infrastructure plan, an interactive map that allows you to identify locations and add comments about charging stations, a survey, a brief survey to get information back from the public on electric vehicles, Links to resources, a few that we've already covered, the statewide planning map, uh, EV dashboard, tips page, and of course, uh, contact us, text.underbarnevi at text.gov email address. This is our social pinpoint page. The next resource is our interactive map. This map allows you to drag and drop charging location suggestion sites or comments on the map. Instructions can be found on the left. There's also a link to our survey, and there's also a link to see what comments other folks have been putting on the map. So this is available for everyone to review. So very useful. If there's a spot that you think would be good for a charging station, we appreciate you to drag and drop and put it on the map. The next resource is our survey. We start by going to the social pinpoint site, scrolling down to the survey. This is where we obtain your feedback on vehicle usage, EV charging, EV benefits and costs. Uh, click the button to take the survey. It'll be presented with two to three questions per page. Uh, there's four pages. You can just answer the questions and scroll, scroll through. Uh, this will be added to the comments for the program and all comments will be added in the appendix of the overall plan when it's complete and submit to federal highways. Lastly, we get to the draft Texas electric vehicle infrastructure plan. I'm not gonna go through everything in the plan. We encourage you to read and provide comments, but I will hit the high points and most commonly uh, discussed items um, in the process. So we stuck closely to the guidelines for the draft plan from federal highways. So you'll see a one-to-one -one match uh, from their template to the plan that you see here. Uh, typical introduction. Uh, the Texas electric vehicle charging plan is a comprehensive framework to enable EV passenger travel across the state and spur economic development. Um, so we'll outline the interaction we've had with the public, with industry. Uh, we'll document that in the plan. Uh, and now I'm going to go through and highlight a few areas, uh, common areas uh, we receive the most questions about. First section are the dates of the plan uh, for the infrastructure plan. Uh, starting in February through July, uh, we're drafting the, the plan that you see here. We're going through public involvement. We've nominated uh, sections to the alternative fuel corridors, um, and we're going to get signatures from our fellow agencies, TCQ and uh, State Energy Conservation Office. 
will submit the plan to Federal Highways August 1st. Um, when August, uh, after August 1st, there'll be a review process from Federal Highways. Federal Highways will give us the okay on the plan by August, uh, sorry, October 1st. Um, we'll also plan to publish the solicitation as soon as possible uh, as we get plan approval. Um, November, December, we'll evaluate the proposals and then earliest would be January, 2023 for any type of contract award. Okay, now we'll skip to page 12. Uh, this is the charging network timeline. Year one, uh, as required by federal highways uh, requirements um, is the alternate fuel corridors. We'll focus on those first. So we went through and we identified uh, the orange location that met the guidance from federal highways. Uh, we evaluated the VW uh, emissions uh, funds that were being managed by TCEQ and look at their locations and then we filled in the gaps to meet the 50 mile requirement from federal highways uh, 50 miles between stations no more than one mile from the exit minimum of four units at 150 kilowatts so that's what you see here on the alternative fuel corridors for year one year two um after, assuming it's year two or year 1.5 or when we finish the alternative fuel corridors we start to move off the corridors um, and into more uh, rural areas. Uh, also inside more urban areas, it'll be a 50-50 split between urban and rural once we finish the corridors. Uh, this is just for illustration purposes. It's not the actual priority of deployment. Uh, it just shows you that we'll be moving off the corridors after the uh, alternate fuel corridors are complete. Moving on to years three, four, five, and possibly six because the funds are available until spent. Uh, you don't have to, uh, the money doesn't go away after year five. So this is conceptually what the map would look like um, after three, four, five, six, and all funds are expended. This is only in the rural and on the corridors. Uh, the MPO areas and urban areas haven't been determined yet. And that will be, that will happen in a collaborative process with the MPOs. Next section will highlight our specifications uh, for the actual DC fast charge stations. So we have a bulleted list of specs. I'm not gonna go through them all here, um, but this is basically what we've come to from our meetings with stakeholders and, and industry groups and reading other plans from across the, the US uh, and, and advocacy groups inside Texas. So please do read and provide comments. Next section is funding. Uh, we've talked about this. Uh, this is gonna be a federal program, 80% reimbursement. Private sector is gonna provide the other 20%. There will be a, a five-year operations and maintenance money available um, as needed for stations. On the alternative fuel corridors, there'll be 47 locations, um, 272 actual plugs. And there's the estimated cost for the federal reimbursement and the private sector funds. We do the same thing for the county seats. And these would be stations at or near the county seats as applicable and then inside MPOs. This is an estimate for DC fast charging and level two charging inside the MPOs. Uh, those will be proposed by the MPO and they'll be co-managed um, until they're complete. Okay, talking about MPOs, uh, there is an estimate for EV charging inside the MPOs, we went through and modified our category two formula from Techstop's Unified Transportation Program to come up with an estimate uh, for each MPO. Uh, estimates based on population, VMT, lane miles, and EV ownership. Uh, there's also five years operation and maintenance, that's, uh, that's as needed. Uh, we're, as the plan says, we're going to have a preference towards maximizing resources for installation to get as much equipment as we can into the field. Next section is energy usage estimates. Uh, this is a very uh, timely topic. Uh, lots of questions about this. It's, it's, it's difficult to 100% correctly estimate how much energy will be used since all cars charge at a, EVs charge at a different rate. They have different equipment, they have different battery sizes, the battery can be a different temperature, all of those things take into account. But we, what we do is we take a theoretical maximum power consumption um, for specific equipment at a specific rate and the number of those units, and then we just estimate max power draw. So if all the stations were used at the same time, which they wouldn't be, and they all charge at the maximum rate, which they wouldn't, it's just a theoretical exercise, 
uh, that would pull 605 megawatts from the grid, which that may sound like a lot, but any typical normal day in Texas, um, it could be anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 unused megawatts in the system. So, um, and that's uh, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas hosts an assortment of dashboards as stated here. So you can see that information on a daily basis for yourself. Okay, that's um, the high points. Uh, we also included uh, in the appendix a, a nice glossary of terms. We know these are all new terms and so it will take a little bit of time to get caught up on those, but we encourage you to read the plan and provide feedback uh, on every page. Uh, we say that this is draft and not final, so we want your comments before we make it final. And you can send those comments to text.underbarnevi at text.gov. And that is the draft plan. Thank you for participating in the Texas Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Plan virtual public meeting. Our email address to provide comments is text.underbarnevi at text.gov. All comments will be included in the final plan submitted to Federal Highways on August 1st, 2022. Thank you again. Have a good day.